This is tutorial 18 and Blender part 4 of how to create a plane and plane maker using Blender and Plane Maker as tools. In the last tutorial I showed you how you move the objects around and constrain it to different axes. I hope that made sense to you. Now we come to the part where we start editing the actual object. And the way you do that is you have to enter into edit mode. Entering into edit mode is a simple matter of pressing the tab key and that gives you access to all the vertices that make up this plane. You can hit A to select all and deselect all. And I'd like to show you some tips and tricks on how to go about editing stuff in edit mode. There's different ways of selecting stuff in edit mode as well, but a lot of the same principles apply as what we've seen uh, used in object mode. For example, I'd like to be able to select only the cube. Now there's several ways I can try to do that. One way is to select each of these vertices and use shift to allow for more control in the selection. This requires me to aim pretty good and notice that when I select the last vertex that composes a whole face, the face highlights. So if I go down here and I continue to select the parts that make up this cube, I see suddenly there are more faces that are being selected. And this is how I know that the, that the cube, oops, see for example this one was the wrong one to select if I want to select the cube. So I use B for boundary select and the middle mouse button to drag the area across which I want to deselect stuff. So this is the last vertex that composes this cube. And notice I pressed eight vertices to make up this cube. And you can see how many vertices you have selected by checking up here. It says VE8 out of 2960 in total in this particular scene. This refers to edges. So you have 12 edges and you have six faces on this cube. So here's a handy reference to let you know exactly what it is you have selected. Uh, you can switch modes between here, now it's an uh, edge mode, you don't have to select the vertices at the end of these edges. There are instances where it's definitely easier to switch modes and select edges or faces. In this instance, the faces are marked by a dot in the middle of each face and you can easily go in and select components of your objects like this using these different modes. Most of the time you'll probably find yourself working in the vertex mode and you can access those also with a keyboard shortcut. It's control tab and then you, what happens when you hit control tab is that you get a pop-up list that asks you what you want to select. If it's edges, vertices, or faces. The thing that a blender really tries to avoid is for the user to have to aim around unnecessarily with the mouse. You'll find a lot of the principles behind what makes Blender so fast is the fact that it doesn't really matter where your mouse cursor is as long as it's in the right window. For example, if I want to deselect all, I just hit A here, provided the cursor is in this window. If the cursor is in this window down here, the button window, then hitting A on the keyboard will not have that effect of deselecting or selecting all. Whereas if I move it in here, it will work. You can use the L key on your keyboard to select everything that's linked together. So for example, if I hover my mouse over the one of the vertices that makes up this cube and click on L, it will select everything that's linked to this particular cube. And if I go over a different vertex belonging to a different group of linked vertices and hit L again, then it will select all the ones in that group. You can even split these different components off. I'll show you because I want to split off this uh, cube anyways from the rest of the plane. So let me deselect all by using A and then use L to select that cube. Now I want to create a separate object out of this cube that no longer is part of the airplane object. So the way I do that is I press the P button and that allows me to separate the selected vertices. So whatever I have selected now will become a new object. So I have to tab out of edit mode, out of the plane, and select this new object which is the cube. And now I can tab back into edit mode in the cube and I've got myself a separate object that can be edited separately. Okay, so now that we have two objects in this scene, I'd like to delete this cube because I'm going to try to re-import this plane into Plane Maker. We're going to pretend that we made this whole model in Blender. Before we import it back into Plane Maker, there's something I need to talk to you about, and that is texturing. Remember we textured this plane using two different texture files in Plane Maker, and we assigned different body parts to the different textures. Well, what happened when we imported this plane is that they didn't import properly. And sometimes Blender needs to be reminded of the file path of where to find those textures. If you look down here, 
this pop-up list here. Remember I told you you can toggle between wireframe and solid view by hitting the Z button. This pop-up list will allow you to do the same thing. It toggles between solid view and wireframe view. But what happens with shaded view, that depends also on the lights that you have set up in this scene. So we're probably almost never going to use the shading view, but we are going to use the textured view. And textured view, you can access also by hitting Option Z on your keyboard, and that toggles between textured and solid view. Textured should show you a model of the plane as textured in Plane Maker. And it's not doing that, so this tells me that Blender cannot link up the texture file to this particular object. So let me split this window, and I'm going to load up a UV slash image editor to deal with this issue. So this is the window where we're going to load up our 2D graphic image of the skin that will wrap around this plane. Now let me open up the image that we've already created, the ERJ140 paint.png. All I wanted to do now is link up this image with the actual paint file that we have in the ERJ140 folder. And what, what that did just now is it created a valid texture for this object. And now we can actually export this back and use this rough airplane in Plane Maker. So let's try that. Let's save this as roughplane.blend. Rough plane. So now that this rough plane is saved in the proper directory with the proper name, I can export it using this script, xplane to Blender, and it examined the textures. It has to make sure that it's only using one texture. There's ways around it, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But what I want to showcase right now is just the ability to create an entire object in Blender that you can append in Plane Maker. And now that we have the American Eagle Jet here, I can load up the object we just exported from Blender by going to Miscellaneous Objects, going here, and browsing to the Objects folder, and selecting roughplane.obj. And now I have both the Blender version of the plane on here, as well as the Plane Maker version of the plane here. And I can illustrate that point by changing the uh, position of the object we imported from Blender. So if you want to create a plane in Blender, you have to start worrying about how to make the moving parts in Blender and all that stuff. That's what we're going to get to a little bit later. But what I wanted to really point out, as long as we're not using external objects in Plane Maker, we find ourselves having a plane that behaves just the way it's shaped. And as soon as we start uh, using external objects, we can make any object that has absolutely no relationship to the way it would fly in the software. Now, there's a way to hide the low quality, low fi low polygon plane that was created in Plane Maker. And this is the whole point of using Blender to create higher detail, higher resolution stuff than what's possible in Plane Maker. And the way we do that is we go to the Expert menu and we say Invisible Parts. And then we say Hide All Parts. And that will hide the plane from view that was created in Plane Maker. And we'll only be able to see the plane that came from Blender. So I don't know if this is clear to you. We've got an appended object that happens to be shaped exactly like the plane that was made in Plane Maker. But now we've tweaked it in Blender. We've re-imported it into Plane Maker. And now it's taken the place of the object we had here in Plane Maker, but I had to go ahead and hide all the parts that were made in Plane Maker in order to replace it with this here. So all the parts that have an effect on the plane's flight characteristics have been hidden, and now all you see is the object that was created in Blender. Now we can go back to Blender and create a high polygon, a high detail, a high functional model of this plane and as long as it doesn't change from the basic plan form, from the essential shape of this plane, we can get away with making a lot more detail. For example, the gear doors, the hydraulics surrounding the steering, the landing lights, all those things we can now go into full detail and make a highly detailed plane in Blender uh, that will fit onto the mold that we created in Plane Maker. Also what we can do is we can work on a 3D cockpit and all of these things I'm going to start outlining for you in the next couple of tutorials. But I just wanted you to understand this link on how to create the plane in Blender and import it into Plane Maker, replacing all of the geometry in Plane Maker and hiding the parts that were created in Plane Maker. These are the beginnings of high quality, high resolution plane creation. 
Thanks for watching and I hope you stick around for the next couple tutorials.